Priority queues. Coming up with a scenario in a queue where you set a prioritize or you prioritize a particular element from the list of the elements which are present in a queue. So that is said to be called as a priority queue, which is a unique concept in queue where every element is prioritized based on some particular order. In the course of a normal queue operations, when an element is removed from a queue, that element is always the first element that was inserted into the queue. There are certain applications of the queue, however, it happens in such a way that require that elements be removed in an order other than first in first out. When we need to stimulate or such kind of an application where we need to create such kind of a data structure, there arises a situation which is said to be called as a priority queue where element is removed from a queue based on the priority constraint. Now who sets this priority constraint? It will be based on your requirement. Like it can happen on your web application where you need to set a particular constraint while developing an application. In such a scenario, you always set a priority constraint. So this queue is an ultimative of that part. So priority constraint can be anything like greater than this particular value. So these are some kind of an examples. Or it can happen, for example, say in layman term, I can explain you what is priority queue. The waiting room at a hospital's emergency department operates using a priority queue, if you know. If it's an emergency department, it operates with respect to what kind of emergency which is going on. When a patient enters the emergency department, ED, he or she is seen by a nurse. The nurse job is to assess the severity of the patient's condition and assign the patient a priority code. And based on that priority code, that patients with the high priority code are seen before patients with the lower priority code. And the patients that have the same priority code, suppose like both the patients have about same kind of serious injury in it. And in such a way, first come first serve basis is observed or first in first out basis is observed. So this kind of scenario is the priority queue based of the scenario. So here element with the high priority is served before the element with the low priority. And in such a scenario, if it happens that two elements have same priority, they are served based on the order in the queue. So that is what is priority queue all about. Let's move to our code base where we will design a particular HTML file for the priority queue and the JavaScript implementation in it. So JavaScript implementation will throw a better picture like what parameters needs to be initialized and what all output should be depicted when we call for a priority queue. This would be the blank HTML page so I'll save it inside my queues with the file name as priority queue.html. Now inside this HTML, I'll define for the basic doc type. So here I'll say doc type and the doc type would be HTML. And inside that I'll call for the HTML tags. So this is my HTML tag. Then comes the head tag. So inside head tag, I'll call for the meta tags. So this would be my meta cassette as UTF-8. And inside this, there will be one thing, which is the title. So I'll say title as the priority, priority queue analysis. Okay. Or just maintain the case in the same format. Now I'm done with this part. Now the next thing is to declare the body tag. So I'll say body and inside body, I'll call for the HTML tag. That is the H2 tag which says priority queue implementation. Okay. Now I'll call for the script tag, which is the associative priority queue listing. So I'll say script and the script type would be text JavaScript. And inside that I'll specify the source code. So there I'll call for say q.js. Okay. 
so instead of q i can even call for the js name as priority js so i'll say priority q dot js so i have defined my html page now i'll create a new page with the same name which would be my priority q dot js so here i'll save this file inside q with the name as priority q dot js now the first thing would be declaring a queue which is the common part so i'll say function queue so because we always initialize a queue so function queue this dot data store and inside this i will say this is the empty array after that i'll call for nq and dq so this dot nq equal to nq I'll call for dq method for removing a particular element. So this dot dq equal to dq. And after this, I'll call for front element. So this dot front equal to front pointing out to the front element. And after this would be the back element. So this dot back equal to back. Okay, I'll call for all the elements. Now the logic for next thing would be to add the two string and empty parameter. So here it will be this dot two string equals two string. After this would be the empty parameter that is this dot empty equals empty. Okay, so this is done. After this comes your NQ logic and DQ. Prior to that, I'll implement the logic the way I explained you in the example about the patients in the emergency ward or the emergency department. So I'll create a function with a patient initialization constructor. So I'll say function patient and inside this I'll call for two parameters and the two parameters would be name and code. So I'll say name comma code and inside this i'll call for two initialization of the parameter that is this dot name equal to name and this dot code corresponds to code okay so i've called for the patient name the next thing is to use the function of dq so dq is something like removing an element but here removing the element would be based on the priority so i'll say function dq and it will remove your element but for that first you will declare the priority so where priority this is the variable equal to this dot data store and it will call for the zeroth element and it will check for the code of that particular element so that code will be taken in the variable of priority and after that it will run a for loop so it will check the code and inside the for loop it will analyze based on the code so here i'll say where i equal to 1 and i less than equal to this dot data store dot length okay so I specify with respect to the length of my data store and then I increment my I value. So I just initialize this for loop. Inside this I'll specify an if condition which says if this dot data store has an I code with the code in it and if that code is less than the priority. So my priority the topmost priority is already assigned in the variable. So if it is less than that of the priority element, then I need to assign this priority over here. So it means that it will check the topmost priority. If it is there on the topmost priority, then it should not be DQ. So if it is like with the less priority, then these elements will be dequeued automatically. So that kind of a logic is implemented over here in the dequeue structure. After this for loop, I will return my priority. So I'll say return this dot data store dot 
splice so i'll use a splice which will give the proper priority code so i'll say priority with the first character spliced in it so this is the function logic for dq after this would be the next parameter is to check if the priority is proper or not and before that we'll also add the two string character which is function two string and it will call for the return string character the way i did in the previous example so i'll just take that part so two string will just return the string in the particular format so i'll just take this part over here and use it sometimes it is beneficial to reuse the particular component so it is returning your queue in the data string format and the data storage value will be taken from that now here if i the next thing is to declare a variable with a patient. So my patient will be variable p equal to new patient. And inside patient, I'll call for two parameters, namely Smith. And the code is 1. So I'm setting the parameter as 5. After this, I'll do a nq. So I'll say var d. Yes, you need to also call for the nq function. So nq function would be with the same logic like we developed in the last chapter. That is nq. There I'll take the parameter as element because I'm adding up a particular element. After that I will say, I'll just take this part over here. And inside this I'll say this dot data store dot push. I will push the particular element inside my queue okay so all my functions are declared properly the next thing after this is we need to add this patient so i'll say var d equal to new queue so i'm declaring a queue so ed is my new queue inside ed i'm going to add up my patient's value so i'll say ed dot nq I'm adding up the patients. So I added up my patient. After this, I'll create a new patient. Say P equal to new patient. And the name of the patient is say John. And he has a code associated to it as 4. And then I again add up this patient. So that is with respect to NQ method. I add up this patients inside the queue. After this comes the next patient. Say the name of the patient is Brown. So I say P equal to new patient. And the name of the patient is Brown. So I add up this patient with the priority as 1. And then I again add up it inside the NQ format. So I'm done with this part. After this comes the patient, say patient name is Ingram. But here also the associated code for the patient is 1. So now comes the next patient, Ingram. And the code of the patient is 1. Again, I add up this particular element inside my queue. So I'm adding all the elements over here. So I have 4 patients with the 4 associated codes and two patients have same code associated to it. So this gives a chain of the priority queue cycle. After this, you need to just print. So I will just say, I'm going to dequeue a particular element. So before that, I will print all my queues. So I'll say console.log. I will print all the queues. So I'll just say ed dot to string. So this will print the string values of the particular element. So let's go to our browser and first of all check all the patients are added or not. Prior checking in the browser, it is important to add all the P associated like the values which we created in the objects inside the enqueued objects or else it will return the undefined type in the queue section. We can also do one thing. We can just print the console with the value of Q that is ED. So this will give you better understanding with two of them. Like how will you get the values inside the queue with the associative name and code.
Moving on to our browser, so this is the HTML and this is the output which I am getting in the console. Inside queue, I am getting the value of data store with the array value of 4 and the data store value of array is taking these four parameters and the name which we added over here is added properly like, like it is enqueued in my queue properly. So I have added the name and the code and it is fetched properly. After this comes the functionality to understand the DQ. So I'll do one thing. I'll just use the DQ method inside my code. So inside code, I'll say var scene equal to ed dot DQ. I'll call for DQ method. And here I'll print the console like console dot log patient being treated and the treated patient will have the value as scene zero dot name. So whatever it is dequeued, the name of the patient will be associated over here. So let's check in our browser and see what the value I'm getting. So this is the browser. Here I get for the uh, property of, cannot read the property of code. So this is the browser. Now moving to our code again. Here you get the output that the patient being treated is John. So John has the particular code associated to it. And if you remember, if you check out to our code, so this was our code base where John was given the priority as 4. So based on the results, it is said the priority like John should be dequeued and John is like removed because he has the less priority and that's why he is removed from the particular system. So in this way, priority queues work with respect to JavaScript with proper implementation of queues understanding like this is the complete code analysis with respect to JavaScript.